Sure. SimData is a management consulting firm uh, that focuses on strategic management consulting for vendors of technologies in the PLM space, including industrial companies. We do this on a, a worldwide basis um, with work across uh, six continents to date. Uh, we also have a research uh, group that uh, researches the market. We've been doing this for over 30 years, mar market research around the market numbers, uh, revenue numbers that uh, the major vendors, where we track about 700 of the uh, vendors on a daily basis and then report on this yearly. And then we also have some education services around um, PLM certification, and we do some events mainly uh, for vendors and technologies, and we do some uh, small events around the end users uh, of the industrial companies in Europe and primarily in Europe, U.S., and uh, Asia. One of the things that the PLM needs to do, and I think also what, it, what is happening at this point in the market in general, is what we call the platformization of PLM. This is um, raising PLM up to an enterprise level, uh, making it basically on the same par as like an ERP solution. And so what we're seeing is uh, the vendors and industrial companies take this on and say, how do I have end-to-end -end connectivity of my processes around product innovation, which is kind of the core of what PLM has been all about. It's been about creation and management, dissemination, et cetera, of intellectual property, which is core to actually enabling innovation. So this platformization, we see this underway. We see acquisitions by various vendors uh, take this on to kind of broaden out their solution offering. We're seeing more and more industrial companies raise this up to the enterprise level and say, we really need this this backbone, this backbone information process backbone that allows for other technologies or third-party technologies to be plugged into this to be part of a platform, basically, a heterogeneous platform, but enabled by a, a core backbone. Uh, to us, you know, that's where things are going. Uh, we think there's a lot of good reasons for that. And, and this, this enablement of, of innovation is a, a key for most companies. And it's not just product innovation, it's also process innovation. So how do you run your development processes? How do you support your product in the field? And you think about uh, Internet of Things and how that will allow you to take data in from the field and better understand how you manage that product in the field or support it, but also how you create the next product. And you can be innovative in anywhere from that concept uh, through end of life or maybe even continuous life from a circular life cycle perspective. So the, the key word that we think uh, right now is the platformization and then the platformization of, P, uh, of PLM. I think one thing is it's that it's an engineering system. I think if a company has that feeling they, they will never be successful because it's not just about engineering. It's about not just product engineering, it's manufacturing engineering, it's service, it's, it's, it's disposal, it's portfolio management, it's conceptualization, it's ideation. I mean, it, it is really an end-to-end -end perspective. And if a company thinks and perceives it's just an engineering system or yet another engineering system, they generally will fail or sub-optimize what they do. That, to me, that is the biggest issue. The second biggest issue uh, that generally happens within organizations is, like with any system, and PLM being notorious for this, is they put it in expecting it to do like they did things before. And again, that, if they think that, if they have that perception that, oh, I can just go implement it and do the same process as I did before in the same way, They've, they've missed the point. They missed the point about how do they change the way they manage information, how do they change the way they execute processes. And those, to me, are the, the two biggest misperceptions out in the industry. The first thing is kind of, I would say, a, a level set is it has to have a certain cap set of capabilities that you need. But that's usually just a fraction of it because there's a, no a lot of technologies out there now that provide that minimum set of capabilities. Uh, but it's still it's kind of the, you have to get in the door and that's, that's getting in the door. Uh, the next step, which is I think much more critical, is the vendor itself. And how do you work with it? How do they work with you? How do they allow you to evolve uh, the solution that they provide you with? Because, you know, PLM... In order for it to stand still, it means you don't change your business. And generally, you don't change your business, you die. So changing the, the platform, changing out uh, the capabilities, evolving or taking advantage of new capabilities that the vendor provides you, this, this relationship, this partnership is really key. And people have to ask and understand, how does that, that PLM vendor become a partner for your organization? How do they let you or provide you capabilities to let you upgrade more easily? How do they support you to extend the capabilities based on their newest version, for example? So those are some of the, the questions that we suggest really focusing on that biz business partnership. And then the, sustain the other one that's related to that is the sustainability of their solution set itself. So do they let you upgrade easily? Do they provide you mechanisms to migrate data so that you don't have an obsolete system five years from now, but you can evolve that system over time, taking advantage of new capabilities without having to re-implement every five to ten years?
cultural change. Uh, ulti ultimately, uh, no matter what the technology is, if you don't change the way you work and try to do things the same old way, it's not going to be very successful. And I'm often asked, you know, how many implementations do we see being successful? I said, well, today we see a lot implemented, and that's success on one level, but not implemented to the way that they get the most benefit, and that's because they haven't paid attention to the organizational change aspect of it. And they, any company that's getting into PLM, again, if they just want to implement what they're already doing, they probably missed the point. So they have to think beyond that. Think, say, how do I really enable my business in a new and better way? How do I better connect people and information and processes? And so much things that I can't do in my, usually in current situations, especially if they have no kind of concept around PLM. They're using email and using, you know, uh, you know different kind of file servers and, and other things that are totally different than the way PLM can support the organization. So they don't start up front understanding the changes required, organizational changes required. It could be structure. It could be just cultural change of using technologies differently, then they're going to really miss the technology side of it or the enablement that could be, well, that is possible. I think it's one is this, this move towards plat platforms. And uh, there's some vendors that are taking this much more seriously than others, and they're building out their, their solutions from kind of a concept to end of life type of capabilities. I think those are the few that are doing that, and just a handful or so. Uh, those could be disruptors for the rest of the industry. I think Internet of Things can be a disruptor, and how do you bring that in? It's really a big data issue when it comes down to it. So you have devices, smart devices that are connected, but how do you bring that data that's coming from those all your products that are in the field that are connected in some way to the Internet of Things, and how you bring that back in and take advantage of rapid improvements there? Uh, in, in your product, be better ways of maintaining the products in the field and other aspects of having an understanding of that data. So big data or data analytics from a PLM perspective can be a disruptor as well. Uh, these are more on, obviously, on how industrial companies will use that technology. Uh, from the vendor's side of it, besides kind of the platform, building out platforms, we're not seeing a lot of changes except for uh, upgradability and some uh, approaches that some vendors are taking with the ability to upgrade more easily and, and building out, um, let's say, more resilient platforms, uh, more uh, sustainable platforms, and that, again, could be a disruptor in the industry. And there's one final piece I'll comment on is there are some movements towards different types of f financial arrangements. Um, you know, moving to subscriptions or certain types of subscriptions, providing open source, source software, which again could change the playing field for the traditional vendors, which are very used to concurrent licenses or named user licenses. So that's a potential disruptor on the commercial side of the house. Yeah, so a process industry, actually, if you think about in the, the let's say the purest sense. I mean, all information are just it's pieces of information. They're objects. So in the process industry, you have formulas. Okay, You don't have bills and materials. You do, actually. You have that on the packaging side. But then you have the formula, which is in the packaging, which is really a structure as well. And then you have the recipe, which is really... And the discrete side more is a routing. You know, How do I actually put the things together? So they actually have very similar... Um, concepts called a little bit differently, but they have the same needs. They have they have regulatory requirements. They have the interaction. This is probably the most unique thing is they do have an interaction between the formulated product and the packaging. So if I, I have to understand those, they go together. Uh, depending on what I put in the formula, I also have, then have to drive a labeling and different labeling or claims. So there's actually. A, in, in some ways, it's more complex than discrete manufacturing. Maybe the product itself doesn't have as many parts, but actually the interaction with other components like labeling and claims management uh, and the packaging itself actually is probably just as complex as you see in the discrete market. I, would, I will add, though, there's, there all, there's some other industries that we're starting to see start to scratch the surface from PLM. One of them is the insurance industry. And you think about the insurance industry, they have a product. It's called insurance you know, the, the policy. And that policy is a collection of information which is configured for it may be where the person lives, what age that person at, what coverage they want. Guess what? They're all regula regulated as well. So they actually have very similar needs as well as the process and the discrete industry, but their product has a little... You can still touch it because it's a, something you print out, but it's, it's less tangible than in the other two major industry sectors. There's a, there's a couple of things there as well, and we talked about in, from a cultural perspective, you know, not taking advantage of it, but there's also a training perspective, or I say education, and this is part of organizational change, is people have to understand why they should do things differently, and a lot of companies don't educate their people, uh, and this, so communication is important, what are we doing, why are we doing it? 
that that's part of cultural change. Education, which is why should I care about it? What's important to me? There's still lacking of training that we often see as people don't know really how to use the system in the new way. And people try to do training too late or not enough of it. So it's it's really under let's say um, not not focusing on those things that will actually embed it and institutionalize it in the company. There's one other thing that usually is a a major issue around implementations and, and failures is that's migration of data. Because there's generally a lot of data that already exists within the organization. And if it's not brought into the system correctly and cleaned uh, and, and, then, and configured correctly, you, you may start it with a new system with just you know, crap. I mean, just a set of information that makes, makes no sense whatsoever. Or they've underestimated the effort, and then they don't do it fully. So I would say those are the two biggest areas of issues. One is the, the educational component of organizational change, and then the, the data, data migration perspective. So one of the one of the biggest buzzwords out out there right now, besides Internet of Things, is, is social. So, social product development or social media, uh, social networking, and other things. How do we take advantage of that, so to speak, in PLM? Or what does PLM vendors need to do? And the way um, we look at it, sim data is social is a way of collaboration. Uh, it's a more uh, f uh, free flowing way of collaboration, less structured than we've try to force in the past. And most companies really struggle with that. They, they think of it as, oh, well, that's Facebook or you know, some other tool like that. It's like, well, okay, that's a way of doing social co collaboration. But what's, what makes sense within an organizational structure? How do you set up uh, structures or governance structures around social? Because we think it's very important to allow people to collaborate freely within the context of a company, and, and sometimes even the context of outside the company. But it has to be managed in a way that one allows for that uh, free flow of ideas, but at the same time uh, allows them to protect their intellectual capital, because that's, that's where the conflict often comes in. People want to share everything, and you know, certain things you don't want to share outside the company, for example. So a lot of companies really, the kind of status is struggling with, where do I draw the line? Do I let things get, what they would say is very loose and very ad hoc, and then there's others that want to control it and not let anything happen. We think that actually there's a good balance there to allow for people to uh, join, you know, you know, social clubs, so to speak, or collaborative efforts and dissolve those collaborative efforts, allow people to find those experts, find that information quickly, and do that in a more collaborative, open collaboration way, which is, would be more of a social way of doing it that we've learned from social media. And I th we think there's a place within PLM but the vendors are struggling with it, and a lot of companies are struggling with it because of these concepts are so new. And it's kind of different than what we've typically done in PLM, where, which is more about structured information. But if you think about information in general, and especially out in the Internet, there's a lot of unstructured information in companies. And that's social has a lot to do with that. So how do we utilize the strengths of social and high levels of collaboration at the same time focus people then to develop information which then can be reused which then can be structured in some way but it doesn't have to be tightly structured it can be just indexed for example so there's there's other ways around it other technologies semantic search and other things that are trying to um, bring let's say knowledge to the equation to allow people then extract the value out of that information so that's kind of the state of it as we see it right now You have, I would say, in, in one way, uh, a bigger level of differentiation today than you had two or three years ago, especially from the, the biggest vendors. So if I look at a Dassault and a Siemens, uh, a PTC, uh, for them that have been really head-to-head -head for many years, they're evolving slightly differently. You know, we got Dassault talking about the three spheres, you know, geosphere, uh, product sphere, and the biosphere, and kind of extending out their capabilities around the 3D experience platform. A little bit different focus uh, than like Siemens, which is more, I would say, closed loop focus with a big emphasis on closing loop from the factory back to the, so they talk a lot of shop floor to top floor. Uh, again, they, they extend out beyond that to maintenance, repair, and overhaul and other capabilities, but their focus is really this enablement of the whole manufacturing process and closing that loop very tightly uh, and adding a lot of capabilities around system engineering and others. So a little bit different focus uh, than Dassault. And then you have PTC that's been expanding out even further with a lot of acquisitions like Internet of Things. They've done a couple acquisitions in that area like ThingWorks, for example, uh, which is enabling them to in one way, they have a broader, maybe not as deep in certain areas than a Siemens or PT, but in Dassault, and so, but a, a broader focus and some very interesting acquisitions or ALM as well for application lifecycle management. So we, we were seeing this kind of movement that they're, the big vendors, which used to be pretty similar in what they were offering to really differentiate themselves. And then you have people like Aris, which have come on the scenes now of... You know, they've been around for a number of years, but they're making quite a bit of headway in the market itself. People are starting to buy into the their... Um, 
well, open source, enterprise open source perspective, uh, and the subscription services around maintenance, uh, very scalable solution. They've released recently some scalability tests that were a you know, quarter million or more uh, users. Uh, so they're doing some things, again, differently, but again, building out a platform as, as well as the other vendors. And then there's a bunch of niche guys that are out there, some interesting acquisitions that have taken place. Um, there's more, you know, more focus around the PLM space by a lot of companies like Oracle and Infor. You know, SAP is making a bigger dent in it with their capabilities. So there's other kind of shifting that's going on in the market as well. And then at the same time, there's more people entering the market with real niche applications. But that's uh, kind of how we see the market right now and some of the, the changes that are going on uh, and how some are standing out in one way or another. When you get the system integrators involved and they see it as important, and Accenture is a good example of that through a number of acquisitions like PCO and um, Prion, for example, in the last year or so, uh, building out expertise within their markets. You see this TCS, Tata Technologies, a number of the you know, geometric, a number of the Indian-based ones as well, Deloitte. Uh, I, I think it is an indication definitely of the maturing of the market as um, – there's probably a combination of things going on. One is the ERP world where a lot of these system integrators made a lot of money on in the last 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, that's kind of flattened out. It's still a good market, but it's kind of flattened out in some ways uh, as compared to the rapid growth it had before. And PLM is then the next oppor area of opportunity. I think also, though, as they see PLM becoming more of an enterprise issue, again, it's more valuable for them to get into it. There's more work to be done. And of course, there's more money to make as a result of that. To, to me, especially, and I think the sim data in general, is there's two components to innovation, two things that enable innovation. One is the availability of clear, concise, and valid information. Because if you have bad information, you're going to make bad decisions. You're not going to be innovative, except if you're very, very lucky. And the other one is time. You know, people, if they're just focused on, like, fighting fires, for example, and they can't be proactive, they can't use the information to go think what's next, they're not going to be innovative either. PLM can help both of those things. So it can be an, what we call this innovation platform, but it doesn't innovate for you, but it provides clear, concise, and valid information, and it has the workflows and other things that allow people to spend time on what they should be doing, not the administrative things that really are non-value added. There, then they have the time needed to go innovate. Now, there's another aspect to it, which is outside PLM's control, and that is the culture of innovation. Companies, some companies don't accept failure, and innovation requires, in my opinion, requires uh, the acceptance of failure, because often you learn more from the failure than you learn from success. And a lot of times, innovations are, on the surface, look like a failure, but they actually may be positioned differently or marketed differently, all of a sudden there's a huge success. So there's, there's, that cultural aspect is important as well, but certainly as an enabler of clear, concise, and valid information, and then streamlining the process and other things that give people the time, those two key things are key to components to innovation. One of the things that, that I'd say I find frustrating in, in, in the implementation of PLM or understanding PLM strategy is I see a lot of industrial companies going to a vendor first and say, vendor, tell me what I should go do. And, and I, I, I've been there. I've, I've been on the industrial side. I came from an industrial, a very large multinational industrial company. And, and the vendors can show you what they do, but they really can't show you what you should do. And that's where you know sim companies like SimData come in as an independent organization. You know we don't SimData's case we don't sell software at all. We don't do implementation of software, and we find that very important. And you know we've been around for over 30 years, so I think that's it kind of shown that that there's value in that. That as as a third party, we don't have we, our vested interest is making our clients successful. And if it may require software, it may never require software for that matter. So I think that independence, my recommendation to all companies, and they don't have to get it from us, but think about your strategy is your strategy. And, yeah, you can get an understanding of what could be done from the vendors, but you need to focus. As an industrial company, you need to own your strategy. You need to focus on what you should be doing. If you need outside help, there's companies like SimData. There's others that are independent that can provide you that kind of outside expertise so that you can get there faster and do that at less risk because, you know, right. companies like SimData is has done this for many times over many, many years, and we can help you and guide you to go do that. But we'd always suggest don't let the vendors define your strategy. You need to define your strategy. If you need help, go look at an independent company like SimData to help you.